the most anticipated movies of 2017 is a video that I have decided not to make. This morning I was like, maybe I should make a video all about the, the most anticipated movies of 2017 and, you know, what video, what movies I'm looking most forward to and you know, th just that whole deal. But then I realized that, number one, that's basically what everyone's going to be doing. And if I want to be even a little bit original, I should probably try and do something else. And second, I realized that most anticipated is, is a very subjective thing and, you know, everybody's going to have different movies that they're looking forward to. So I thought, let's, let's try and do something else instead. And then I thought, well, maybe I can make a movie. A movie? And then I thought, maybe I'll make a video about the least anticipated movies of 2017. Like, five movies that are probably going to be terrible and, you know, let's, let's just trash on something for five minutes. But then I thought, you know what, there are going to be a bunch of people doing that too, and why, why contribute to the negativity? So then I thought, what if I combined them? So, I thought, I'm going to make a video about five movies that are definitely not going to be good, but that I will definitely enjoy. <laughs> now, by good, I don't mean that these movies are going to be the worst thing ever, or just not entertaining. Like, um, I haven't thrown in movies like the Emoji movie. Those aren't going to be fun, and no one's going to enjoy them. These movies, instead, are movies that are trying to be good, and are definitely not going to win any awards, and probably going to not do well critically, but I'm going to go into the theater, and I'm going to have a good time, and I'm really excited. So here's my list of the top five movies of 2017 that are not going to be good, but I'm gonna enjoy them. Starting out at number five, we have Going In Style, a movie about Alan Arkin and Morgan Freeman and Michael Kine robbing a bank because of some old guy problem, and it looks terrible, and I'm so excited. <laughs> Every year, Morgan Freeman and Michael Caine make about 20 movies between them because they are old but they never seem to stop making movies. And of those movies, I usually see maybe one or two because they tend to not make very good movies. And when I saw both of them in the thumbnail, I thought, eh, this will probably be decent. It'll probably be something like, you know, Now You See Me 2 or whatever. And then I watched the trailer and I can't wait to see this movie. <laughs> I am definitely gonna see this in theaters. It looks ridiculous. The idea of three old dudes performing a heist and they're probably gonna be a bunch of old dad jokes and it just sounds right up my alley and I honestly can't wait to see it. Coming in at number four, we have Transformers The Last Night. Yes, I know. At this point, I have decided that Michael Bay must be some sort of wizard because no matter how bad these movies get, I keep going to see them. The Michael Bay Transformers movies are the McDonald's of cinema. No one really likes them and they keep doing things that, you know, you don't really enjoy, but you keep going anyway because you gotta see something, right? When the trailer for The Last Night came out, I did not expect anything. I expected it to look exactly like all the other Transformers movies and weirdly enough, the trailer looks really interesting but I know they're tricking me. <laughs> this movie, I guarantee, is going to be terrible, just like all the other Transformers movies, and yet somehow I know I'm gonna wind up in the theater and I'm probably gonna have a good time because when I saw Transformers 4, I laughed the entire time because it was so bad, and I just, I can't wait to see it. Um, I'm excited for a Transformers movie. Kill me. All right, coming in at number three, we have King Arthur, a movie I had no idea was happening until I saw the trailer from Comic-Con this summer, and now it is one of my most anticipated movies. <laughs> this movie looks terrible, and I know I'm gonna enjoy every single minute of it. Now this movie is directed by Guy Ritchie, who if you don't know, he's he famously makes really not good movies, like just very bland, kind of stylistic action movies. He's not very, he's not in Hollywood's good books, I'll, I'll put it that way. And for some reason they thought, let's, let's get him to do a King Arthur movie. In fact, I bet the board meeting went down something like this. <clears throat> uh, sir? Yeah? Sir, uh, we have this King Arthur movie being pitched to us right now. Oh, sounds like something I'll be interested in. Yeah, yeah, I, I figured you would say that. So, um, um, who do you, who do you want us to, to get to direct it? Uh, we could, we could get, like, Christopher Nolan, or, or Ridley Scott. Guy Rich doing anything? Just get him! Uh, also, what, uh, what, who do you want to be the main actor? Like, we could get somebody, you know, British, <laughs> Taron Edgerton maybe want to do it. How about Charlie Hunnam? Yeah, he's, he's free. Get that guy then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll let him know. I hate my job. Mm. Needless to say, I'm exceptionally excited. It's got Charlie Hunnam from Sons of Anarchy and Pacific Rim. It looks like it's gonna be over the top and ridiculous, and it's gonna have one too many one-liners for a King Arthur movie, and I'm gonna enjoy every last second of it. I'm gonna see it in the theater. I might even see it 
in IMAX or something, who knows? <laughs> I'm the problem. I'm why Hollywood makes bad movies. <laughs> Coming in at number four, another movie I didn't know was happening, but I have never been so excited about a movie, Triple X, The Return of Xander Cage. <laughs> the Triple X movies are the Fast and Furious movies, on crack. They're over the top, they're ridiculous, they've got Vin Diesel in some sort of fur coat, talking way too deep and riding a skateboard, and it looks awful and insane, and it's got Donnie Yen from Rogue One and the Yip Man films, and just a ton of really good movies. I don't know how they got him to be in this movie, but I'm excited because it looks terrible, and I'll watch anything with Vin Diesel in it, and it's just, it, I can't wait. I can't wait. Links to the, to that trailer in particular down below, but links to everything. Please go watch the trailer for this and go see this movie. I'm so excited. <laughs> and finally, the movie that I'm anticipating to be really terrible, but I can't wait to see it because I'm going to have the best time. Fast and Furious 8. Woo! I have a deep and unabiding love for the Fast and Furious films. They all bring me joy, unlike any other film franchise can. Like, even Star Wars does not make me giggle with joy in the way that the Fast and Furious movies do. Because unlike Star Wars, the Fast and Furious movies are not good movies. <laughs> they are, in fact, bad movies. But they are so joyfully just... They're so aware of what they are, and they're so good, and Fate of the Furious looks to be about the same, and it's got like a submarine crashing through the ice, and it's got the rock breaking out of prison, and it's gonna have Jason Statham being Jason Statham. It's gonna be everything I want in my life, and I've never been more excited for a movie. Well, there you go, guys. That was my list of top five movies that are not good, but I'm gonna... good... something. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I will see you on Saturday. Bye!